Well, hey there, everyone. Welcome to episode 30 of Yonin's Edge. In this bonus episode, we'll look at the $15 Rough Rider Night Out Frame Lock. This knife was recently introduced by Smoky Mountain Knife Works. So let's jump in with some basic specs. This knife uses a drop point hollow grind. It is manually deployed by use of a flipper tab. It uses a frame lock. And it uses what I call a bronze anodized aluminum scale on the show side of the knife. The scale itself measures 4.5 inches. There's about 3.6 inches of usable blade here on the knife. The tip to tail measurement of the knife from front to back is seven and seven eighths. And the knife weighs in at 4.1 ounces. So first impressions and what I like. This knife is just 15 bucks, folks. That's all it is, just $15 for this knife. So, I really like the look of this knife. That's actually what convinced me to go ahead and buy this. Because I got it and I said, hmm, kind of a cool looking knife. Kind of, kind of interesting. Um, so that was a big part of why I chose to get the knife. Because I thought, well, alright, you know, it's a $15 Rough Rider, let's, let's give it a shot. Um, overall, size-wise, too, it's a good size. You can get all your fingers on it here in hammer position. There's a little bit of room left. So most people are going to be able to get a pretty good purchase on this knife. There is this front finger position kind of here. I don't really know how much I trust that. I, it's not really a full choil, but I suppose you could use that if you wanted to. So... The knife feels decent in your hand. It does have a noticeably hollow ground blade in it. And the finish on the blade's pretty nice. This bronze anodizing is pretty nice. They did this kind of black wash around the rest of the frame lock and the blade. So the knife has a pretty good look to it. Um, it came out of the box pretty darn sharp and has a pretty good looking edge. It looks like it's ground pretty evenly on both sides. Um, again, they don't list what the steel is on Smoky Mountain Knife Works. They just tell you stainless steel. Sometimes they'll tell you it's 440C or something like that, but you have to assume, and that's all I'm going to do here, I'm just going to make an assumption, make an educated guess, that when they just list stainless steel and the knife is made in China as this one is, let's see if we can see that there, maybe not, um, that it's probably 8CR 13 MOV. It's the most common steel. It comes on a lot of these budget price knives. So I'm just going to go with that, but who knows? It could be something totally different. Um, that having been said, the blade has performed as expected for something in the 440C to 8CR 13 MOV type blade steel range. Uh, it's cut and sliced pretty well. It was sharp enough to slice through paper with no issue when it came out of the box. Um, I did cut with it pretty much. Uh, I chopped up a few boxes. I whittled some two by fours, things like that. And then I just restropped the knife after I was done and the things pretty much held a, a, a pretty solid edge throughout all of that. So can't really complain about the actual blade steel and the hollow grind. With the hollow grind, it is pretty slicey. It's a pretty slicey little knife and that is a plus. So, um, Size comparisons. I'm going to get that out of the way first because I have some other things to say here. So let's show you it next to a Demco 8020.5. Lots and lots of people have one of those. It's a good knife size comparison because it's very similar pivot to pivot uh, size-wise. Uh, roughly about the same blade cutting length as the Demco, even though the Demco's uh, got a little bit more uh, swept up blade. And the handle size is just a little bit bigger than the Demco is. So there's your size comparison. So now let's talk problems, issues, or things I don't like. Oh boy, where to begin? Um, 
Let's start with the pocket clip because this is the most simple one. Not a deep carry clip. It is reversible. You can take it off and put it on the left side if you wanted. But then again, it's a frame lock, so uh, I don't really know how effective that would be on the other side of the knife. But okay, you know, it is it is reversible. But the thing is, because it's got this big uh, deep spoon cut in it right here, it, you can you can feel this pocket clip right here in the meaty part of your hand when you're doing a lot of like, say you're slicing through a lot of cardboard and stuff, you do start to feel a little hot spot here off of the clip right there. Um, it doesn't, you know, give you a blister or leave a, a permanent mark, but you will definitely feel this the way that they designed this clip. They could have went with a little shallower spoon design, I think, and maybe done a, you know, a clip that went back and looped over and brought this clip back further and it would have moved it more to the hollow of your hand here with the like kind of the meaty hollow part of your hand and you wouldn't have felt the clip at all. But again, you know, that is what it is. So that's the most minor issue I have with the knife. Um, <laughs> the frame lock on the knife is very stiff. I will say I have adjusted it and I'll get to why in a moment. When I first got the knife, I could not, I could barely get the frame lock to release and open the knife. That's how stiff the frame lock slash and the detent system was on the knife. So that is, you know, a big issue. And even now it's still stiff enough that it pretty much almost completely pre prevents you in any grip position <clears throat> from using the blade cut. There it goes. It finally reads using the blade cut. It's just not feasible. It's just not usable like that. The only way this knife really deploys comfortably is with the flipper tab and that's it. So there is that issue. So then um, I noticed once I got it to open how gritty the knife felt. So I took it apart and I found out that it had two different caged ball bearings in it. One, which looked like it was the right one that roughly fit the size of the blade cutout and the knife pivot screw. And a second one that looked like it did not even belong on this knife. It was grossly oversized. It was not riding um, in any way, shape, or form centered around the pivot at all. That really surprised me. Um, there was a lot of gunk and stuff in the knife from machining. So there's a lot of like grit and machining grit in there. And then when I started cleaning and inspecting the inside of the knife a little further, I found that the bearing that looked like it was the right size was actually missing three balls from the cage. And um, the other bearing, the larger one that didn't look like it belonged in this knife at all, had two balls that were completely like squared off. They just looked like little shiny pieces of metal stuck in there. And when I cleaned it out good and I realized what, what the deal was with them, they just literally fell out of the cage. So two defective cage ball bearings, one on each side of the knife, one that looked like it was the right one but was defective, the other one that doesn't look like it belonged in this knife at all that was missing actual ball bearings. Um, and they were they were ground down, a couple of them were ground down and just fell out. So, <laughs> yeah. Luckily, I, in my knife drawer, I had some spare ceramic ball bearings from a Kaiser that I had a blade issue with not that long ago. So I decided to put those in. I cleaned everything up. I reinstalled the new bearings, reassembled the knife, and I finally got the pivot adjusted properly so that there wasn't a ton of play in there. I got the bearings, got it to be pretty close. And I did mess with the liner lock, but if I moved the liner lock out so that it was soft and that it was easy, and easy enough to actually break like that, um, I found that the knife didn't deploy right and then this didn't lock up right with the blade here. These two surfaces didn't match up and so the blade had all kinds of wiggle and wobble in it. So I had to keep tightening it back up until I got it to a place where it's pretty acceptable. There is a tiny bit of blade play here. There is some, but the knife um, functions okay, locks up okay in this configuration. So... <laughs> I know, and, and now the knife still doesn't have great action. Like, it's not ever going to be a drop shutty knife. Like, ah, that's pretty much the best you're going to get out of it. 
Here's the thing, folks. I know it's a $15 knife. I get that. I understand that. But I really seriously have to question or have my reservations about the quality control on these knives. I mean, Rough Rider is a pretty well-known brand, right? I mean, you know, people people know this name and even though they do tend to sell inexpensive knives, the quality on them does tend to be fairly good. So, again, uh, there's a lot of disappointments uh, here on this knife, especially once I opened, opened up the knife and saw what was going on in this area over here. So, I'm... I'm going to say nay on this knife. Even though it's a $15 knife, I'm going to say nay on the Rough Rider Night Out Liner Lock knife. Um, and here's why. There's your 15 bucks that you spent to buy this knife. But the issues that I had with it, and again, it could just be a one-off thing, but I don't know. If you let that kind of stuff slip through, I have to question the quality control a little bit. I have to say that that's a little suspicious on the rest of your knives. Add another five bucks in, and there's a whole bunch of knives that you can buy online and through other sources that are in that twenty to twenty-two dollar range, right? Five to seven dollars, and then you get a lot different knife. You could pick up a Sativian, you could pick up a Gonzo, right, for twenty bucks. Um, that the, the quality control on is pretty good. I really do have to say that this knife was a disappointment to me. Um, and had I not had spare parts and the ability to take the knife apart and put it back together and kind of get it tuned up a little bit, I, I wouldn't even have a functional knife. So for that reason, I will not be recommending this particular knife, the Rough Rider Night Out line uh, frame lock. So there you go, folks. Everything that you need to know about this particular version of the Rough Rider. And as always, I thank you for watching. Please consider hitting the like button down there and hitting the subscribe button if you'd like to be notified of future videos. That's all I got for you today. Have a great day and stay sharp.